What's up guys? We're in Malibu, California today. It is beautiful weather. We're out here at the beach, which is pretty sweet if you ask me, because we've got some fat tire bikes. We're gonna go ride on the sand in just a little bit here. Now we're checking out e-bikes from Sondors. Now if you don't know about the Sondors company or Storm Sondors, you, you might have been living under a rock in the e-bike space because they are a big name. They absolutely crush it on their publicity. They're known for having one of the most successful crowdfunded electric bikes and widely publicized too. It's one of those ones that everyone in the space heard about. And they said, we actually got one of those at Electric Bike Review, reviewed that original one on the beach as well. Although I don't think that one was in Malibu, I forget where. But anyway, Saunders has come a long way since then. They have a ton more bikes. So they've got a huge lineup. They have changed up their components to be a little bit higher quality, much better warranty too. So without you know talking any more about them, let's dive in and we'll, we'll talk about what's changed and what's new as we go through the bike. So without further ado, let's dive in. We got the Sondors Fold XS here. This is their powerful folding fat tire e-bike. 750 watts on that motor back there. You only get the one frame size for this. It's pretty reasonable in terms of fitting different sizes of riders here. It's You can't quite get a full extension or anything if you're tall. I'll demo that for you in a little bit here, but just the one full frame size. And I think you got two colors here. This is torch, and I believe the other one is graphite for your color choices on that. And this is you know high performance, great for riding at the beach and tackling really bumpy rough terrain because you've got the suspension fork up front. That's an air suspension fork with 80 millimeters of travel. There's that suspension seat post right here, looking at about 30 millimeters of travel on that. And of course the saddle here, it's the Cellar Royale gel. You can actually see the gel in there. It's comfy, it's wide. And then the fat tires, those add a lot of comfort. If you hadn't ridden a, a fat tire e-bike before, then that's uh, you, you, you wouldn't be used to that level of comfort that they add, but it is fantastic. I'm a big fan of fat tire bikes in general. And of course, they also add the bonus of being able to ride on sand. You can drop those down to around 5 PSI. You can take them out on the beach or on snow. It's just really loose terrain like that. They'll perform great. We'll, we'll do a little bit of that later. Now, Sondor has made a pretty big change for all of their bikes a year ago with extending the warranty. So this has a one-year comprehensive warranty. Now, the original Sondors, and for quite a while after that, it was only a 30-day warranty on those for the components on it, which is really short. You know, that's, that's not a whole lot, and it's pretty easy to see that something might go wrong after just the first 30 days, and then it would be out of warranty, which would be a bummer. So I think it was June of last year that they extended their warranty for everything to a full year when you're comprehensive that's pretty standard for most e-bike companies out there there's some that go a little bit longer than that but one year is really kind of a standard and so I love that they've extended that warranty out they've expanded their support too and so you know they are capable of providing a lot more support where before it was such a small team that it's it can be tough to handle depending on you know how many requests are coming in and that kind of stuff so they seem to be really stepping it up in that area and that's something that i appreciate because it's that's one of the leading complaints that you would see about sondors if you're just browsing online like i was doing is that there was a lot of people that are claiming they had problems with support and things like that. And of course, you know, it's unverified internet stuff, so who can say how much of it is true? But it seems like Saunders has really taken that seriously. They've stepped up their game in the warranty and the support department. Um, what else is cool about this bike? So they've changed up the cells that they're using to LG. I believe it's the LG 3500 cells in the battery. We'll be folding it and taking the battery out so that you can have a look in a little bit. It is setting right inside there. That is a 48 volt, 14.5 amp hour battery too. Nice high capacity, just shy of 700 watt hours. It's you know, pretty much as small as you would want to use with this motor back here. So check this out, fat tire specific from Bafang, and it has the Sondors branding on it, but that's the only customization to it. Other than that, it's just the standard fat tire specific Bafang, 750 watt nominal. You're looking at about a thousand watts peak on that motor. It is awesome. It's fun to ride. It's got a lot of get up and go to it. So you can activate it with pedal assist, of course. And then they also have the thumb throttle here on the right grip. Something that Sondors does that I always appreciate is that you get full throttle power from any assist level. So it doesn't matter if you're 
you know, all the way down in pedal assist level one. If you want throttle, you just hit it and you got full power on demand. It's nice because it's fun, but it's also nice for a safety thing. If you need to accelerate to get out of the way of something really quick, you just hit the throttle and go. You don't have to, oh, I need to shift up to level five and then go. So I, I like that. Fun and it can be a nice safety feature. All right, let's dive into these components a bit here, see what we've got going on. Now for the human powered drivetrain here, we're looking at a Shimano Turney derailleur, the Shimano Turney group set. This is the entry level derailleur from Shimano. So it's their, their most affordable. This is a, a value derailleur right here, which is of course why we see it on here because Sondor's is all about, I'm sure you've seen their like electric for everyone campaign. They're all about making quality affordable bikes that anyone can get. And the price on this one actually, I, I believe it's $17.99 possibly $16.99 for this e-bike. So not too bad considering what you get here. So moving back here, we've got the Shimano Turney here. Now they've done a good job with their cable management and their protection. As you can see, we've got the steel derailleur guard right here. Protects not just the derailleur, but also the motor connection point right there. Now that's nice for, you know, if you fold this bike up and you're moving it around, maybe putting it in and out of your car and stuff like that. Really nice to have this just to protect that from getting bumped because it, since it folds away from us here, this is gonna be on the outside and normally it would be a bit vulnerable. So that really helps to protect it there. You're looking at seven speeds here, a one by seven. Range is not real impressive back here. It's a 14 to 28 tooth cassette. So that's on the smaller side, but it will work pretty well for this bike right here. The motor is just so freaking powerful that if you're getting started on a hill or something like that, it will help you out big time. And then you're looking at a max speed of 20 miles per hour with the assist so that that on the lower end there, that 14 tooth will work for that. You'd be able to pedal a bit past that, but not a whole lot for the range. But like I said, I think it still works just fine for this bike. And we've got a 48 tooth steel chain ring up here. They've upgraded the guard here from some of their other folding bikes that use a plastic guard. So now we've got aluminum alloy. This is a full guide slash guard on both sides, keeps the chain from bouncing off. That's really nice on a bike like this. You got the suspension and the fat tires and that power. It is practically begging to be ridden off road and over bumps. So I appreciate that they did a good job with the chain guide and guard here. Now the pedals here, these are Welgo folding pedals. Bring that back down here so you can see. You can push in, a little bit more challenging with one hand. Fold those up for when you're folding the bike. We'll demo that in a bit here. Now the cranks do say Sondors on them and they are made by, I think these were the Locos. Let's see, Lasco, that's right. Lasco cranks, aluminum alloy on those, standard length of 170 millimeters. And I believe they were telling me that they, uh, they, have, they upgraded their change to a stainless steel chain. So it'd be a bit more durable, especially riding on the beach. As you can see, ours is got quite a bit of sand in it. Definitely gonna need some cleaning because we've been cruising around in the sand. Now I mentioned the suspension. We've got suspension seat post here, 30 millimeters of travel on that. And then you also get the fork up here. This is an air suspension fork, 80 millimeters of travel on it. And you can pop this off here, switch hands. If you want to adjust the air pressure in the fork, then you can pop this off and use a you know, your bike pump that's a standard Schrader valve so you can let air out or pump it up a bit more. So you can adjust that to fit whatever size and weight of a rider you are. And of course they include the ring here so you can measure your compression, see how much you've been pushing down on there and you can adjust the clicker over here as well. So yeah, they you know, did a good job with that. It's adjustable for different sizes of riders and that 80 millimeters of travel combined with the fat tires is plenty for pretty much any rough terrain that you might want to tackle. Fat tires help a ton. If you haven't ever ridden a fat tire bike, I recommend it. It's it's really an experience like no other. These are the Chow Yang 20 by 4.0 fat tires. You get a pressure range of five to 20 PSI on these. So if you're riding on sand, snow, something like that, you would drop that down to five or so. We'll, we'll demo that for you earlier so you can see what it can actually do in the beach and in the sand. Now these are good aggressive tires. They've got a good tread pattern, excellent traction. The only downside that you're looking at for these, no puncture protection that's included with them. Depending on where you ride, might not be a big deal. 
if you ride somewhere uh, like we do in Colorado, we got a lot of goat heads and stuff like that. So I pretty much have to put function protection in everything. But you can add protective liners, you can add slime. I do recommend doing that because changing a flat on these e-bikes, especially on the rear, you've got the motor to deal with and everything. It can be really a pain to get it off and actually change the tire. So definitely worth investing in. Got things moved around here. We can take a look at the brakes while we are over here. Now these are 180 millimeter rotors, hydraulic disc brakes. These are the Tektro Ariga series. This is the E sub, uh, Ariga E sub series. So these are e-bike specific brakes, dual piston calipers, the nice big 180 millimeter rotors on the front and in the rear. I'm a big fan of the hydraulic brakes. You get you know instant reaction times when you actuate the levers. They're easier to actuate too. So if you've got maybe some grip strength issues or anything like that. Very easy to maneuver. And these are nice big four finger levers too, which we actually usually see with the mechanical ones. So they're awesome stopping power. It's nice for a heavier-ish bike. Now they've got the motor inhibitors as well, cuts power to the motor immediately. Really a must when you've got the cadence-based pedal assist system. And speaking of weight on this bike, they are actually, uh, overestimating their weight on their website. The website says 70 pounds, weighted at about 68 pounds, two pounds lighter than their quoted weight. So plenty of stopping power for such a heavy bike. Now, while we're up here, let's just go ahead and dive in. We'll go around the cockpit. So we mentioned the nice four finger levers here. The grips here are ergonomic rubber grips and they are locking. So even if you, you know, try to bear down on them, they're not gonna rotate at all. That's pretty awesome for a bike like this that you might be taking off road a little bit, might really be bearing down on those grips. So I like that they're, they're locking on there. And of course the ergonomic always feels nice. We've got the control system here with the, the button pad on the left and it's in a good spot. Like I can reach it without having to to, um, move my hand you know way over like you do on some bikes I do have pretty big hands so keep that in mind but it's nice and easy to reach the display is adjustable for angle so you can reduce the glare but it is not removable now it does have a USB port right here and this is a full amp USB port so if you want to charge an iPhone that'll work as well and not just Androids which only need a half an amp 500 milliamps and then while we're here let's we'll go ahead and dive in to the display so if you want to turn it on now there is a power switch over here on the right side of the bike where you can turn the battery on and off pop this out and it seals really well which I'm a fan of so there it is, it's already on of course, off and on. That's also where the charge port is, so you can see it's on a leash there, so it won't get lost, which is good because it would fall off inside the frame. Cover that back up, battery is on. We'll see if I can get this in with one hand. Almost, all right, yeah. All right, so battery's on, so we can come back over here, hold down the I, power up the display. Now it's bright enough to see in this really bright sunlight, but just barely. I would like to see a little bit more brightness. I think we already took the screen protector off. Let's see. We did. So I think I have it set at max brightness already. It's going to be a little bit tough to see on the camera. So I think I will actually rotate a little bit so I can shade the display. Help you guys to be able to see it. It's a nice readout here. You've got the there's actually a speedometer going around and then the speed readout right in the middle. And then you also get power, which is shown on the green. So the power will show just the, the motor power output. And you'll see that increase as you go up the assist levels. And as I mentioned, you get full motor power from any assist level. So even if you're down on one and you hit that throttle, you'll see that power jump all the way up there. You've got a trip odometer right here and then your max speed right over there. So it'll keep track. We, as you can see, we've gotten up to 21.1 miles an hour on it. So no problem hitting that top speed of 20 miles per hour since this is a class two. So you can change your assist levels by the you know, plus right here to go all the way up to five or go all the way down to zero and no throttle when you're in zero. So that's nice if you just want the throttle off. Want to make sure that you don't bump it or anything like that. And there's a walk mode right on the underside right here. You know, pretty standard on e-bikes these days. And actually pretty handy if you're walking it through the sand as we were earlier, which was something I haven't had to do before and I appreciated it there. Now, if you want to change settings for this, there you hold down plus and minus at the same time. And it is so much easier than most e-bike displays. They have all these weird cryptic numbers and letters, things going on. So you just navigate it with the pad here. You can go into display setting and change your units, imperial and metric. And yep, we do have the LCD all the way up to brightest. You can set the sleep timeout. You can reset your trip timer. 
AL sensitivity. I think that's the automatic light sensor for the display. You can set a password, which is nice. You can set a password for it so that when you fire it up, you have to enter the password to be able to ride. It's just a little extra security thing that helps prevent someone from riding off on it, at least, you know, using the battery power. Let's go back here, go to advanced settings, and oh, needs the admin password. So I don't know what that is, so I can't show you guys that. But you once you go into the advanced settings, this is where you would make uh, you you can change your uh, like your wheel size and you can actually configure the uh, power levels that you get for the um, for your different levels of pedal assist. So, you know, at, by default, maybe it gives you 20% in level one and 20 per, or, you know, 40% in level two. If you want to tweak those and set them up, customize them to your liking, you can do that. I think that's pretty cool. You can also actually even calibrate the like the, the voltage stuff for the battery. So you can say, hey, you know, I want bar one to be whatever, however many, uh, however much capacity remaining. So if you find that your battery readout is not accurate, you can tweak that a bit. And so that's pretty cool, actually. I haven't really seen that, at least not seen that called out on other displays. Now the battery readout right up there on the top left, that is only a five bar. Yeah, you know, it gets the job done. I much prefer a percentage because then you can actually see like, oh, it's exactly this much percent. Five bars, 20% steps, not very precise, but it still works. So while we're on the main screen right here, you can just uh, quick tap the I button here to switch your readout. So right there, it's showing max speed. We can switch that over to average speed and then trip time. And then there's the odometer and then uh, back to max speed. So you can do quite a bit of customizing on these. I like these displays. As I mentioned, it's not super bright for viewing in the in direct light, but it, it certainly gets the job done. The speed is right in the middle, and that one is pretty big, which that one in the battery probably the most important, and since the battery is nice and green, very easy to see. So I like this display overall, and I, I love that it has the charging port on the side, because you've got some real estate space right here where you could mount a phone mount or something like that. Moving around the cockpit a bit more, we've got the throttle right over here that we mentioned. This is a thumb throttle, and it's variable, so you can adjust just how much power you want to give to the motor. Shifter over here, this is the Shimano uh, Revo Shift, so this is a uh, twist shifter, right? So you twist on the grip here. You've got the gearing readout window that shows you what gear that you're in, and it's done great so far. We'll demo that when we get into the ride test. Now, more ergonomic stuff, I suppose you'd say, for the cockpit. This is easy to adjust, which it kind of has to be since it's a folding bike and you can fold the stem down, but you can pop up this clamp here and adjust your handlebar, how whatever angle you like that at. Let's see if I can get it back hand. And then you can also pop this one right here and you can adjust the telescoping of the stem. So I'm gonna move the camera here so we can put that up at its max height. Now this is pretty dang tall when you have it all the way up here. I'm gonna raise the seat up too, just so you have a idea of what that looks like. Come on, let's see if we can get the max height on here. There it is. Right down there, line it up. So the handlebar goes way up there. I mean, honestly, that is that is a pretty comfy position, but it's pretty, pretty tall unless you're tall and you got long arms. We'll jump on here just so you can get an idea for it. So I'm able to sit, uh, you know, upright and have my arms almost horizontal. I do, I do kind of like this. It's almost a little bit of a chopper feel. Um, so you can, you can get it up there pretty dang high if you're a tall person. Now, as I mentioned, you can't get the full leg extensions here. I have the seat all the way up and I'm, you know, right about, right about there. And I'm really tall. I'm six foot three. So if you're more average height, this is going to be great. Uh, especially if you're a smaller person, then you'll have no problem fitting on it. All right, let's, let's get this adjusted back down. One thing to note is that you don't have a ton of control cable length here. Now it, it seems to turn just fine when you have it that high up. And as I said, it's unlikely that you would even want to raise them that high. I've actually been writing it all the way down at the lowest setting and it's been just fine. So I think you got enough control cables really for 
most use cases for the bike. I do like that this, the handlebars are easily adjustable like that. It's nice for a folding bike when you fold it down, that way you can get them positioned perfectly so it takes up the least amount of space, but it's also nice for just adjusting on the fly. Makes it a lot more convenient. Now keep in mind these quick release adjustable type clamps, they do loosen a bit over time, so you do wanna tighten them up every now and then, you know, maybe every every month or two, just check and make sure that it is tight enough. They'll, they'll, as you ride and have impacts and bumps and stuff, they will tend to loosen just a little bit. Now they did a good job with their cable management overall. They've got, so you see they've got these nice thick braids on here to keep those close together. And then they're doing internally routed cabling here. So it goes right into the frame. You can see one kind of running around right there, coming out for the brakes. And then of course the motor on the other side. It's nice, it's a nice sleek look to it. It really shows off the awesome paint job and the frame design. And they've got this, uh, this, this Velcro pad right here that helps to protect that brake cable right up here. And I think it looks great, honestly. It's, it's such a beautiful bike. Now, I think we'll dive in and show you what the folding is all about. So you can check that out. Now, first thing when you're folding it is you want to fold down the stem. So this lifts up right here, pulls out. A little bit difficult to do with one hand. There we go. That folds out and then you can fold that over here. Remember I mentioned it's nice to be able to adjust the handlebars so you can lift that, maybe rotate those out just a little bit. There we go. All right, I'm gonna fold the pedals. I always forget to do that first. So I remember this time. Fold that back. All right. I do love the kickstand is mounted in the rear back here. No pedal lock when I mean, you can you know suspend those freely. Helps out balancing the weight of the bike too. That's a pretty hefty motor. I'm estimating that it's probably about 10 pounds. Those ones usually are. I'll, I'll put the exact weight on the review, written review, of course. And this is adjustable for length. The base of it down here is really small, which is not super convenient if you're trying to park it in sand like we did earlier, but for hard surfaces like this, works just fine. All right, back to folding. Then over here, you pop this guy up, open this, and then the bike can fold in half. Uh, I'm actually going to pause the filming, get it folded, and then catch back up with you, because this does weigh 68 pounds. Ta-da! There we go. It is folded. So this is about what you'll be working with if you do have it folded and need to transport it. It's pretty standard for a fat tire bike. Honestly, they're, they're big, heavy bikes, so you can only do so much when you're folding them. Now, a lot of people will usually just remove the seat completely. Helps it to be a little bit more compact. Now, it has the little... Um, the guard right down here, but it doesn't balance very well on that. And I actually, through sheer luck, was able to just get it to perfectly balance on that pedal there. And you can see the battery here, of course. There it is. Now we need a key to take it out and they didn't give me a key today. So I'm gonna film that bit tomorrow. We'll, we'll edit that in here. Okay guys, got our hands on the keys for the fold excess here so that you can take a look at the battery. That's it right there in the tube. So we will unlock it here and it does slide out very easily. So just make sure you're paying attention as soon as you turn those keys. And here you go. This one's the 48 volt and 14 amp hour battery with those LG cells. It's got the switch right here and the charging port. So you can charge this off the bike if you need to. Now make sure you put this cap back on here right before putting the battery back into the tube. Otherwise it's gonna snag and it might rip off of there. And yep, there you have it. You're looking at 7.5 pounds on this battery. So really not too bad for the capacity. That's one of the nice side effects from using those good LG 3500 cells. <laughs> All right, guys, we actually got one of the batteries here that is disassembled. I'm here with Bruce from Sondors. He brought it. Um, so this is, this is the one from the uh, Fold XS, is that right? This is from the Fold X or the XS. They use the same battery. Uh, as far as construction wise, they're three rows of 15 plus an additional row of seven. So that makes it 52 cells uh, combination. And they use the actual true LG. Uh, they're 3,500 milliamp hour cells to get the 14 uh, amp hour rating on them, which is about the biggest you're gonna be able to stuff in one of these packs. And then over here, it usually has the lock assembly. And this is the BMS right here. And it's typically bolted down in this position. And then it has a, this connects to the charge port switch, and that goes into the case. And then this back here plugs into where it plugs it, 
connections for the battery output. All right, guys, check it out. We got the charger here too. Now they use the same charger for all of their new bikes now. It weighs in at 1.4 pounds. It's a three amp charger, a little bit better than the standard two amps that we usually see. Get you a little bit faster charge, still really lightweight at just 1.4 pounds. And really pretty good size too. Like you get a little bit of extra weight, but honestly, I'm impressed for a three amp. And you can see it's got the fan built in right there as well so that you don't run the risk of overheating. So yeah, pretty pretty standard for a fat tire folder. Very nice if you want to throw it in the back of your truck or your you know, even the trunk of a car and transport it to the beach or something like that. All right, I'm gonna get it put back together and then I'll catch back up with you. All righty, we got back together. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna didn't get the handlebars quite right. Let's uh, maybe like eh, all right about gonna get it right in the center. That's always tough. Right about there. That looks good. How do we do? Yeah, that's good. Good angle. All right, so let's try to jump on and take it for a spin. You know, we've talked about pretty much everything on here, and the the riding is where it's at. Let me put my helmet here. All right. I do have the seat all the way up since I'm pretty tall, and as I mentioned, even with the handlebars down here at the lowest height, it's pretty dang comfy. You know, I can sit nice and upright on it. And so I might raise it like an inch or two for maximum comfort on those handlebars. But even as it is, this is pretty good. It feels nice for a tall person. You know, fat or folding bikes when you're tall, you always have to make some sacrifices. And it's usually for the leg extensions, as I mentioned. But hey, that's all right. So I'm going to jump on, take it for a spin. We are going to just crank that baby all the way up to level five and then just take off on the throttle. Let's see what we can do. Woohoo! <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but my front wheel actually came off the ground a little bit there as we started. Now, I'm sitting upright and leaning pretty far back, so it makes sense, but dang, that is some serious power. We're going to turn around and stay in the parking lot here. So much power, just right off the bat. We're going to see how fast we can get going. So you can see, we hit that top speed of 20 miles per hour very quickly. That was a big speed bump back there. Um, yeah, we so very quick to accelerate and hit that top speed of 20 miles per hour. These are incredibly powerful motors, actually. It's pretty common to see them spec to go you know, up to 28 miles per hour. So plenty, plenty to work with there. That's 80 Newton meters of torque as well. So it'll do really well on hills. Let's do some more cruising around here. You can see that power bar in there along the bottom. That's the darker green one. And it, you know, it feels pretty dang stable. There's a, when I, when I got going 20 miles per hour, I'm, I'm not really noticing any like frame flex or anything. I mean, it's a huge freaking frame. So that, that makes sense that we wouldn't be be seeing that now as i mentioned you can use full throttle from any assist level so let's demo that so we'll switch this all the way down to level one on the pedal assist get turned around here so even in level one we can just hit that throttle and take off all right we're gonna i've got this all the way down to level one i'm actually gonna switch it to zero and just Ride it like a bike a little bit here. What gear am I in anyway? I'm in seven. It's got a like little magnifier on there. Actually helps it make it a little more visible. So let's get shifted all the way down. Should have done this uh, before slowing down. <laughs> du, 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 du. All right, all the way down into the lowest gear. Just wanted to ride like a bike a little bit just to show you the derailleur in action. See that back there? Um, it, like I said, it does a perfectly good job from the tourney. Uh, it is their entry level group shit from Shimano, but we can shift up through the gears here and you can hear a little bit of clunking back there. But, I mean, it, it works, it does what it's supposed to do. You can hear a little bit of grinding i guess grit would be the right word as i mentioned we've been right on the beach so we got a little bit of sand back in there definitely need to clean that out uh, when we get it back for the day but yeah like i said it's it's doing solid for 
a shifting performance there. Now let's take a look at the pedal assist side of things. So we're gonna switch it on up to just level one for now. And in level one, the motor is pretty quiet. You know, I, I, I can hear it a little bit, but it's not bad. And pretty decent response time. I, well, pretty standard response time, I suppose, for a cadence sensor. We're working with a 12 ma magnet seal. Or I think it's unsealed, actually. We'll look when we stop here. But I, I think it is a 12 magnet unsealed cadence sensor. And honestly, actually, it, it really kicks in pretty dang quick now that I'm listening to it. Let me shift up a gear here. Very responsive. So I'm gonna increase the power to, we'll say three, so that, well, we'll just go up to five so you can hear it. So you can hear how fast the motor kicks in. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm actually gonna <laughs> downshift this. It's so powerful, guys. This thing is wild. And I'll turn around here so you can get some better light. All right, so check out the pedal assist responsiveness here. So, all right, that's actually really impressive just how quick that is responding when I start pedaling and when I stop both. I feel like I'm only getting maybe half a revolution on the pedals. I'm gonna pull over here so we can take a look at that cadence sensor. We did not talk about it in the walk around. There it is, yep, so it's not a sealed sensor. It is right back there. Uh, yeah, it's a 12 magnet, so that is standard. So they have, just with how they have tuned their electronics they've got that better response time that's pretty dang cool honestly typically on a cadence sensor like this you're going to get you know one or even two revolutions on the pedals before that kicks in so hey that's pretty sweet well done well done sondors for that i'm gonna move this back up here to five i wanted you guys just to be able to hear the motor hear how loud it is we'll get you a good shot of it here just going on the throttle was all the way up to the top speed we actually hit 20.4 miles per hour went past it just a little bit so as you can hear it's pretty dang loud but well i mean it's loud you could hear it i guess i should say that that's about standard for a 750 watt hub motor like that get out of the way of these cars here so it's not you know not going to be winning any stealth contests but of course if you're familiar with sondors that's really not what they're all about you know they're <laughs> They like to be big and bold, and so it fits right in, honestly. And, and like I said, I just love the power on this motor. It's so much fun. Man, I'm gonna tune that down a little bit, because it is just, when you're doing pedal assist, that, that high level is just, a, it's a bit much, honestly. I like, like two or three, two or three feels pretty good if you're riding it on pedal assist. All right, guys, so, check it out we lowered the pressure down in these tires quite a bit here i, I think it's pretty close to five i, I don't know actually i, I don't have <laughs> pressure gauge with me so i'm kind of eyeballing it here but we're going to do a little uh you know just off-road get on the sand i wanted to really show you guys what it can do which is why i switched over to the the chest mount here um because it really helps out when you're you know, going over these bumps and everything, that suspension feels real nice. You can definitely hear the tires now that I got them lowered down, but it's just got so much power. Look at this. Yeehaw! You know, no problem getting all the way up there to, or actually, I think they got this one tuned up a bit. I went right on past 20 miles an hour there. Slow down a little bit. See where we want to go here. I'm gonna go with some like off-roading trail up here. I'm gonna zoom on up there. There we go. I've never actually ridden in the sand before. This will be a little bit of a learning adventure. I've heard you wanna, you know, keep your speed up and all that, but let's see. Oh yeah, we're just cruising. Well, that's cool. Woohoo! 
We're down here at Point Dume, which apparently is super famous and they film all kinds of commercials. Check it out. We got people rock climbing. Yeah. <laughs> See if we can get, uh... oh, this is just cheating now. The sand's super hard packed right down here. Yeah, on this uh, on this packed sand here, it's it's almost too easy. It's uh, I mean, look at this. We're already going up to 15 miles an hour here. Wonder if we can jump up and over this thing. We'll find out. Let's find out. Oh yeah! I have to help out on the pedaling front a little bit here. Woo. We're in extremely soft sand now. But yeah, we're just cruising right along. I am, you know, going full throttle and helping to pedal too. Oh, <laughs> uphill and sand a bit too much. We're gonna turn around and go back the other way. And like I mentioned, I'm not sure I actually lowered these down enough. Maybe that's, uh... let's take a look. I don't know. It's, uh... I'm not sure about my skills for eyeballing tire pressure. I am gonna lower it down just a little bit more because we got we got some some room to go. Yeah, that ought to do the trick. Check that out. They're actually filming a commercial right over there. All right, guys, we are back at it. Oh yeah, that actually made a huge difference. Uh, it's, it's definitely easier starting out if you go light on the throttle. Excuse me, seagull, sorry. <laughs> Drifting all over the place. We're going down, baby. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Did you get down here on the hard pack? We are just flying. Let's see if we can make it all the way back up and out of here. Here comes the soft sand. Yeah, that helped out quite a bit, actually, going uphill on the soft sand. I'm using this motor pretty heavily for this whole sand thing. Now, they do have cutoffs in there, so if you overheat, they will, you know, they'll be able to shut down. Oh, yeah. Now we're no trouble. It's pretty fun, actually, when you get to you get to turn in and kind of drifting around. All righty, guys. So, so we're just about done here with the Sondor's Fold XS. You know, there's a couple things that we didn't uh, did get into when we were doing the walk around earlier. So I just wanted to call those out while we're here. There is that cadence sensor. You can see it right there. That's not a sealed sensor. So it, if it gets like bumped or bent, the magnets can fall out. It's not a likely occurrence. You know, you've got the protector down there. And of course, the chain ring itself keeps it pretty well insulated but that just still does still happen this is comparing it to a sealed sensor where the magnets are internal and not as vulnerable so that's one of the that's part of what helps this to be a, a more affordable bike because the use of components like that there's a few other concessions we i think we mentioned there's no pro function protection in the tires and no reflective striping on the sides either which i really like to see just for a, a safety thing so that is a little bit of a bummer that it's not on there and you don't really get any accessories with the bike you know there's no fenders no lights no racks if you want to add those you can you know check it out you got the the bosses for it and there's those bottle cage bosses on the bottom so if you wanted to add stuff to it that's easy to do and Saunders has a lot of stuff they have a lot of different accessories you know fenders baskets you name it there's a lot of third-party stuff for these bikes too you know modding and accessorizing Saunders bikes is really a big part of the community but the philosophy that Saunders goes for on all their bikes is you're getting just the bike you know like hey we're gonna build a good quality bike so give it to you for a really great price and then if you want those accessories you can get them but then if you're somebody that doesn't need or want them then you're not paying extra for stuff that you're not going to use so i can dig that i think that's fine you know just be aware of that when you're getting it that if you do need those accessories you might have to pay extra to get those but yeah solid bike i had a blast on this thing it is so powerful with that 750 watt motor as you saw in the ride test it tackled the sand out here no problem and this is like this is some really soft sand too and even you know cruising uphill on it 
absolute blast. All right, guys, so if you got questions about this, comments on it, chime in in the comments section below. You can talk to us back on our full site, electricbikereview.com, where you will find the full written review for this bike. It's got all the pictures, all the specs and measurements, compare tools so you can compare it with different Sondor's bikes. And we've got our forum there too, Sondor's forum, where you can connect with other owners and talk about your bikes. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Ride safe out there. We'll see you next time.